Okay, so in this tutorial, we're gonna be looking at ketones and their reaction with hydrogen cyanide. This of course is nucleophilic addition, just like it was when we were looking at HCN with aldehyde. So it's the same reagent, same mechanism, but the product you get is slightly different. So that's why I'm gonna treat this separately in a different tutorial. So a reagent, as I say, is exactly the same. It's hydrogen cyanide. Because it's highly toxic, we actually produce that in situ in the reaction itself. So we put a mixture of either sodium cyanide or potassium cyanide in acid, usually H2SO4. And when those two things combine, HCN is actually produced in situ. So let's take a look at what we actually produce here. So when we take our ketone and react that with hydrogen cyanide, those two come together again, just like an aldehyde to form a two hydroxy nitrile. Now we still get that two hydroxy, but this time we get an added bonus. We get a two alkyl group as well. Now that alkyl group can either be a methyl or an ethyl, maybe sometimes a propyl if it's a massive molecule, but usually methyl or ethyl. Now the blank here, again, just like in aldehydes, depends on the length of the biggest carbon chain, either side of that carbonyl group in the ketone. So that blank, is the main part of the molecule. That's the longest carbon chain. So I don't know, butane nitrile or pentane nitrile or something like that. Now, in terms of the mechanism, as I said before, it's exactly the same as an aldehyde. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw this out all in one foul swoop and just point out a couple of things as I go along. If you wanna look at the mechanism in more detail, I suggest you go back and take a look at the aldehyde and HCN tutorial. So again, with our mechanism, we draw out this ketone group. I've drawn it out the same as before, but this time we've got two R groups because of course that carbonyl is in the middle of a carbon chain. Nice and big, dipoles on and lone pairs on the cyanide and two really clear curly arrows here to show the first two parts of the mechanism. In terms of our intermediate, We've now got a tetrahedral molecule as we did before, four single bonds, but in intermediate, we've got that fully negative oxygen atom because of the heterolytic fission in the first step. That then reacts with a hydrogen cyanide molecule, that dipole in there, the delta plus and the hydrogen, attacked by that lone pair in that fully negative oxygen, and that then breaks the H to CN bond by heterolytic fission. Of course, what we end up with is our main organic product and the CN minus, exactly the same as we did with aldehydes. Now, in this molecule here, really importantly, all right, we do get this 2-hydroxy because this nitrile group here, that assumes the carbon number one position, okay? So the chain length, the main chain length, okay, is going to go up and over here. So this is carbon number two, which is why it's 2-hydroxy. Now, which way the carbon chain length reads is completely dependent on the length of the R groups. Now, these might be the same length, in which case it doesn't matter. You can just name it appropriately. So maybe ethyl ethane nitrile or propane propane nitrile. So if one is longer than the other, that longest part goes to make the full part of the name here. The shortest R group is considered a side chain. So really importantly here, this is why they're different to aldehydes because we do get a side group. So that shortest R group is now considered an alkyl side chain. And that's because that CN is now carbon number one. That has to be part of the main chain. Now, for example, so if I react butanone with HCN, no need for a number here in terms of where that ketone is because there's only one place it can be in a four carbon molecule. So if I set this up in terms of a displayed formula, so we've got butanone here, of course, that carbonyl group is actually present on carbon number two. And I'm putting HCN in green here so you can see where those atoms actually end up in the molecule overall speaking. So by adding that HCN, we now have a different molecule altogether. What we've got is a redirection, if you like, in that main carbon chain. Now, everything in black here on the right is part of the original butanone molecule. Everything in green, of course, that's where our atoms come from in the HCN. So what we end up with is this new molecule. I'm a new numbering system. 
So just to highlight here, this must be now carbon number one. This must form this part here. So this is going to be, if this is carbon number one, two. Now this is the longest chain out of the two directions we can take. So this is going to be the main part of the molecule. So it's one, two, three, four. So this is going to be butane nitrile. So we don't actually have any change in this one in terms of the naming and the, of the main carbon chain length. But butane nitrile here, this of course is our other R group that's now considered an alkyl side chain. So this is a methyl side chain. And of course, we've got our hydroxy group. And notice how this is carbon number two. That's where high, our hydroxy group is. And that's where our methyl side chain is, okay? So in terms of naming this, well, using the convention above, we've got two hydroxy, two methyl, butane nitrile okay so that's what we've ended up here if we were to use propanone okay that would actually be 2 hydroxy to methyl propane nitrile so it really depends on the ketone that you start with so things to watch out for here just a couple of little headlines so just be aware it is possible you're going to get a new chain length it really depends on the type of ketone that you start with but a lot of the time and a lot of examples you come across there won't be but just be aware of it draw your complete fully like displayed product molecule and then decide on a name from there but carbon number one is always going to be that carbon in the nitrile group ketone undergoes nucleophilic addition with hcn you're going to get a side chain so just watch out for that side group and make sure you put that in the name so overall mechanism exactly the same the actual product you get is different because of that side chain and because of a possible new carbon chain length, unlike aldehydes where you definitely get a new chain length. Okay, so just be aware of those. And once you've done a couple of examples of these, you're laughing.